be better to just play it as a medium shot with the situation. Yeah, I think maybe. Let's take that. Can't do it with your head down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's not bad. Let's do that. What's going on on my YouTube? It is. I'm Jacob with another movie review for you guys. And continuing on in my series of Stanley Kubrick reviews, in today's video, I'll be taking a look at the 1955 film Killer's Kiss. Killer's Kiss revolves around Davy Gordon, a 29-year-old New York boxer at the end of his career and his relationship with a dancer and her violent employer. Killer's Kiss was released in 1955 and this was Stanley Kubrick's second film as a director following Fear and Desire. Much like Fear and Desire, Kubrick not only directed but he also shot and edited this movie because he was a perfectionist. And I think this one is better received overall than Fear and Desire. I haven't read anything about Kubrick disowning this film and wanting to destroy every copy of this movie compared to Fear and Desire. But I can't say this movie is any good either. I do think this is a better made movie than Fear and Desire. And you can definitely see some of the camera tricks in this movie that led to Kubrick being the well-known director that he is today when watching Killer's Kiss, especially the way he like meticulously crafts shots, how he places the characters, and how he keeps everything in focus. You see that in this movie, and you can definitely see the beginnings of what made Kubrick such a fascinating director. There's a boxing scene at the beginning of the film which had so many cool editing tricks that really blew me away that he did that for a movie in 1955. And I think maybe some of the Filmmaking of that sequence might have been what inspired Martin Scorsese when he did Raging Bull decades later in 1980. I could definitely feel some of the influences in this movie as early as this movie. And it was actually really cool to see. I like some of the close-ups, the camera work, uh, some of the sound mixing in this sequence, uh, the brutal punches. I thought it was a very well-done sequence. Also, the film is just over an hour long. I think the movie doesn't overstay its welcome. I don't think it's paced the best, but I don't think it's as excessively long compared to some of the other Kubrick films I have issues with later on in his career. This one, I'm like, oh, 67 minutes. It ain't that long of a movie. The movie is kind of fascinating because, you know, there's some boxing elements in it. There's also a film the war type vibe as our main character is narrating the story, and we flash back to all the events that lead up to the events that you know, in the movie, there's like a forbidden romance going on. Our main character's trying to save this woman that he has a crush on from her violent employer who's obsessive toward her. Pretty simple, straightforward story, but it's not one that's entirely memorable by any means. The acting isn't anything to write home about. There's not any actor in this movie that has like a noteworthy performance compared to in other Kubrick movies where, you know, you got Kirk Douglas in Paths of Glory or Malcolm McDowell in A Clockwork Orange or Jack Nicholson in The Shining. There's always somebody in a Stanley Kubrick movie that stands out and elevates the excellent filmmaking by delivering a powerhouse performance. You don't get that in Killer's Kiss, and it leaves the characters very hollow and empty. Also, there's just some bizarre story decisions in this movie. Yes, it's straightforward, but... Because it's straightforward, I'm also kind of bored by it. I've seen this premise done in better movies, even in this era, that, you know, this movie just does not have the same spark compared to the similar premise that, you know, Alfred Hitchcock did with something like different circumstances, but similar to what Hitchcock did with something like Rear Window, which took a simplistic story in a, single, in a singular location and did something spectacular with it. Whereas this movie it just has the great filmmaking, but the characters and the story is just not as well done, and it leaves a lot to be desired. Also, there's just some weird choices, like I said, like 
Kubrick does some really bad exposition dumps in this movie. People complain movies today have it bad on exposition dumps. But, you know, there are movies in the past that, you know, don't really do their exposition well either. And Killer's Kiss is no exception. Like, uh, like when the dancer is telling her backstory. For some reason, we flash back to her as a ballet dancer while she's telling the story. And we get these close-ups of the ballet dancer, and when she's telling a dark story about, like, her jealous sister and her abusive dad, it's very distracting. Like, it zoned me out so bad. And you have, she's telling this serious story, and you have this random dancing sequence going on in the background. It's not a good way to tell a story and get the audience invested into the tragedy of this character, and... I don't get what Kubrick was trying to do there. That was the biggest bust of the movie for sure. That sequence alone is a terrible way to do execution in my opinion. It's weird I'm criticizing Stanley Kubrick because usually he's more of a craftsman. He's known for uh, doing interpretive storytelling where he leaves the audience guessing throughout, especially in movies like Clockwork Orange and The Shining. Here he just does a weird way of doing exposition by doing a ballet sequence in front of it. That was not a good choice in my opinion. I don't know. Killer's Kiss is one. I see the seeds of a good movie in here, especially because of how well directed it is, but the story is too straightforward and it's not really that memorable. The acting is not the best. And I didn't care for some of the visual choices in this movie at the end of the day, especially that already mentioned exposition dump sequence. It's better than Fear and Desire because it's better made and you can see the seeds of Stanley Kubrick as a director through the filmmaking of this movie alone. But Kubrick still has a way to go before he's master director Stanley Kubrick. I'm sure we'll get, I know we'll be there by Path of Glory which is two movies away but we'll see what his next one does. But if it's a, if it's a step up and an improvement that is definitely a good sign, and I can't wait to check out the next film in the director project. As for Killer's Kiss, I'll be giving the film a 2.5 out of 5 stars, and on the 100-point scale, it's getting a 43 out of 100. So that wraps up my review of Killer's Kiss as part of my Stanley Kubrick director project, where I'm going through his complete filmography from his directing debut to his last film. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll leave a link in the description below where you can check out my Stanley Kubrick director playlist where you can check out all the other reviews I've covered in this director project. I previously tackled Fear and Desire, his first film at the time of this video, so be on the lookout for more Stanley Kubrick videos coming your way on the channel. And join me next time when I review Stanley Kubrick's filmography as I'll be reviewing Kubrick's next film, a movie he released in 1956 called The Killing. I've seen some people call this a hidden gem in his filmography, and I am excited to check this one out for the first time. So be on the lookout for my review of The Killing coming to the channel real soon. But if you've seen Killer's Kiss, let me know down in the comments below what you thought of the film. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Were you mixed on it? But whatever your thoughts are, please be civil and respectful of others. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, click the subscribe button to see more content, and the notification bell next to it so you can be notified of future videos. If this is your first video, besides movie reviews, I also do TV reviews, ranking videos, and other fun stuff along the way. I have some more videos planned for you soon. Hope you all have an amazing day. God bless, and I will see you next time. Goodbye!